Uh, big news yesterday was uh, that Southampton have appointed their new manager and it comes hot on the heels of the EFL fixture release this morning. And Russell Martin, who's taken over at St Mary's uh, from Ruben Seles, his first game will be away at Hillsborough Friday night live on the Talk Sport Network. Sheffield Wednesday against Saints at the beginning of August on a Friday night. Um, Russell Martin, new manager, three-year deal. I mean, look, this, it's a change in strategy, isn't it? I mean, they've got to get this decision right, haven't they, Sport Republic, after what has been a terrible series of appointments and acquisitions over the course of their tenure. They've only been there 18 months. Yeah, I mean, you try to make sense of it in terms of the thinking. I mean, obviously, there was, there was perceived wisdom behind the appointment of Nathan Jones. They looked at the data and the metrics and felt that the way that their team needed to play and the deficiencies in their team were things that um, Nathan Jones would bring because of the metrics of what he did with Luton. What they didn't price in was the glaring evidence that was there for them to see about his travails at Stoke. And it was really poor. And whilst people can learn and people can move along... Um, I think the main issue with Nathan was his inability to communicate with the players, not tactical lack of awareness, his inability to talk to two factions that can undo you. One is the media and the other is the players. I think the players are more important because if you can communicate with the players and they can win games and the media becomes an incidental. But he failed on both fronts and this endeavour and this motivation that he had. So going to your original question, um, look, I mean, Southampton are the least favoured of the clubs being relegated probably to bounce back again. That's maybe just because of the nature of the lack of success under this ownership model. Um, and there may be changes in the boardroom which may destabilise them even further mm. because they've got some good people in there that may be looking for pastures anew. But <sighs> it, it's steeped in some substance. Russell Martin's a decent fellow and it will get, I suspect, the players playing in a decent way. It's whether they can recover and whether the ownership is thinking properly. Because if you look at last year and their selection and recruitment process, they spent more money than they've ever spent before, and yet they didn't get the balance right. They didn't have enough experienced pros to go with the investment into young players. So they were a side, with the exception of probably James Ward-Prowse, that was a little bit rudderless. Mm. And, and they've been flirting with it for a couple of seasons and they've got what they've got. People will say, well, you shouldn't have got rid of Ralph Hassan Hootel. And there's a mixed reaction to that. Obviously, with the outcome that you've got now, people say, well, I wouldn't have got rid of him. But there was also a school of thought which is he'd run his course. Mm. And if anyone's prepared, I mean, if you look at the background, Sam, this guy was getting his coaching staff whipped out from underneath him yeah, they, they by, they the, by the, the senior lot. management. Now, that tells you that either the manager doesn't have the chops to control his own destiny or he's just complicit with the poor thinking that the ownership model... It felt at the time that that happened that, that basically they'd sort of thought that maybe they needed to change the manager, but they thought they needed to give him one more chance. So to try to but sort the, of the, change his approach, they, they gave him a, a new that, set of that, staff. That may, well be your, that may well be your construal of the situation, but the, the, the behind that is the reality of a manager, any manager that allows that to go on. And I'm all for recognising your place in the food chain. I'm all for recognising mm. the fact that you're a manager, kind of your employee do as you're told. But you also accept as an owner, a tacit acceptance that the manager chooses his staff. The manager chooses who he works with. And the fact that he accepted it sort of almost said that he was on borrowed time. Correct. Yeah. Um, his they race has they been will run. change slightly the way they play. There'll be a more high possession model, um, a bit like Burnley. Um, Russell Martin's Swansea team averaged 63.4% possession over the course of the season. More progressive passes, the most in the league, a high expected goal shots per 90, etc. The data's all there to show there's a slightly different model and they'll try and play that Burnley way or a similar sort of way. All depends on the personnel. All depends but they'll on the need personnel. to make sure they acquire talent as well, won't yeah. they? Because they've lost it. They will lose a few key players as well. Lavi will probably end up moving on. James Ward Prowse, we've already mentioned, he'll probably end up moving on as well. Goals were a problem last year. But if year they get the right the money, for League, these but they might, Adams might score goals in the championship. They, yeah, absolutely. If he stays, if they get the right money um, for the for the players that are the valuable players, they can redistribute that to players that can do what they need to do to get out of this division and then worry about the change-up again if they get promoted next year because that will take care of itself. I, I would suspect Southampton to be competitive. Mm. Whether they're going to... I would I would be surprised if Southampton aren't inside the top six next year. Yeah, I think there's... Um, they've got a new technical director in Jason Wilcox who's yeah. highly rated, came from Manchester City, was head of their um, academy uh, prior to, to going to Southampton. Um, they've also signed uh, Darren Mowbray from Aberdeen as the club's head of, of recruitment. So there is a shift in the boardroom. There is a shift behind the scenes. We'll see what happens with Southampton. They Needs start. a better win rate than 36%, though. I think 36% is not going to get you promoted. <laughs> I think he probably does. Sheffield Wednesday and Southampton 
Southampton, a League One club last year, Sheffield Wednesday, and looking for a new manager themselves against Southampton. Is the first game of the new EFL Championship season. It'll be live on the Talksport Network. We'll look at more of the fixtures in just a moment with Ian Danter, AFL commentator. Quick word on a couple of other clubs. Um, it looks like Ruben Sellers is going to Reading. He was the former manager of Southampton. Is a bit of a drop, but he's obviously desperate to be a manager and yeah, maybe an area in which he sort of learns his learns his trade a little bit. But well, I made the observation job. that my first perception of him, and, you know, we're all talking about a sort of stand-away perception and looking at the reality of what we're hearing rather than what we're seeing on a training ground, right? Mm. But if you've been around managers, as I have in previous incarnations, you can sort of read between the lines. And my takeaway from Ruben Sellers was he's great for the media, shoulders back, chest out, talks in a language that everyone can understand, seems to make common sense, but it didn't translate on the pitch. So I moved from somebody that I thought, OK, he got a result one of his, in one of his early games, I think, against Chelsea, didn't he? Yeah, beat Chelsea. Um, uh, got but, then again, everyone, but, but everyone beat Chelsea. Right? That's true. So there's no particular, <laughs> you know, no particular nobility in that. Ouch. But then the more I listened to him, the more I thought, no, you, you don't have the substance at this level. Now, going into Reading with all their challenges and the ownership model that seems to just ignore whatever the obligations upon it, whether it's running ridiculous salary ratios for as many years as I can remember through to being sanctioned for that, through to now subsequently running the salary levels at ridiculous levels and not paying their players on time and getting sanctioned for that. Um, it looks like the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. Now, sellers to me, maybe, maybe going in at League One, maybe, or you know, the the lessons that he will have learnt and the ability to deploy them in a way where he's not being scrutinised within an inch of his life for every single misstep that he takes um, by being in a lesser league might be, but I, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that one. Yeah, we shall see. I think it's going to be a very difficult situation to operate in, that's uh, for sure, especially with points, deductions hanging over them and threats of uh, further issues. (laughs) 